of a certain wild man caught in the sea. In the time of King Henry II, when Bartholomew de Glonville was custodian of the castle at Orford, it happened that the fishermen, fishing there in the sea, caught a wild man in their nets, who, as the Castilian had said, had been handed over to the astonishment of him, was naked on all sides, but pretended to have a human appearance in all his limbs. He had hair, but on the surface it looked as if it had been torn and pulled down. His beard was long and bushy, and around his chest was very hairy and shaggy. But the aforesaid soldier caused him to be kept longer days and nights, and that he might not go to sea. What was set before him, he ate eagerly. He would take fish, both raw and cooked, but would squeeze the raw fish firmly between his hands until all the wateriness was consumed, and so would eat them. But he did not want to eat a word. He said nothing, or rather could not say anything. Even being hung up by his feet and severely tortured, he said nothing. Although he was brought to the church, he showed absolutely no signs of reverence or any credulity, either by bending his knees or bowing his head whenever he saw something sacred. He always sought his bed in haste at sunset and lay in it until the rising of the sun. It also happened that they once brought him to the port of the sea and released him into the sea placing before him the outer nets in a triple order. He soon sought the bottom of the sea, and passing through all of the nets, he emerged again and again from the depths of the sea, and looked at the onlookers from the shore of the sea for a longer time, submerging often, and re-emerging after a little while, as if insulting the onlookers that he had escaped their nets. And when he played in the sea, for a long time, and all hope of his return had already been removed, he came again of his own accord, swimming in the waves of the sea, and remained with them for two more months. But afterwards, when he was more negligently guarded, and already disgusted with them, he fled secretly to the sea, and was never seen again. But if this mortal man existed, or if some fish pretended to be human, or if some evil spirit lurked in some body of a drowned man, as we read of one in the life of the blessed Adonius. But it cannot easily be defined, especially because so many miracles have been told by so many of this kind. The Wild Man of the Sea is a strange tale given to us by Ralph of Coggeshall, and many of us will probably pass it off as medieval hogwash, but let's look into it. As Coggeshall wasn't a mere peasant full of superstition, he was an abbot, a learned man, and a chronicler, who historians today rely on for sources. Also, Bartholomew de Glanville who was the custodian of Orford Castle in the reign of Henry II. At the very least, this is a genuine attempt at recounting a recent event that had occurred only a few years prior. Now, this was the reign of King Henry II, so between 1154 to 1189. People put it around 1167 to 1171, sort of give or take. So, what actually went on in Orford then? Of course, it could be bollocks, but let's look into it with an open mind. <laughs> Given the professional credibility, we'd give any one of these positions. A highly respected man of the cloth, a knight, and several fishermen. Okay, maybe not the last one. Fishermen and sailors in historical times had a bad reputation for exaggeration, 
but knights were soldiers, albeit upper class. Sandhurst chaps, from the modern perspective, very respectable. And, as I said before, a churchman, an abbot. Coggeshall, the abbot, gives us three 12th century suggestions. A mortal merman, a strange kind of humanoid fish, or a spirit possessing a human corpse. Okay. He described the creature as hominum silvestrum, literally a wild man. But these wild men really are just regular people who became feral. Could he be a feral child, albeit older? There have been many documented incidences of feral children raised in the wild. Many can't speak, having learned no language, so possibly. And wild men motifs are everywhere in Orford. But most probably be because of this legend. A human looking fish? Cryptids have always fascinated people, myself included. They are not always hoaxes and tall stories like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster. Many pose genuine questions, and others have been proven to be undiscovered species of animal. Some may simply be ancient creatures we considered long extinct, like the coelacanth. But here you have to accept a fish like hominid, and given he looks suspiciously human, no fins, no gills, no fishtail, or any evolutionary advantage, we can assume it's just a regular bloke. Which leaves us with the supernatural option, possession by spirits. Though to accept this, you have to accept a supernatural option. Assuming you do, is the spirit possessing a corpse, which leads me to ask, why is it not decomposing, or possessing a living man? Which leads us to my next point. For us in the 21st century, we have other options at our disposal. Here the concept of possession, when taken out of a supernatural environment, leads us into the realms of mental illness. Given the day and age, the 12th century, this could be anything from a soldier with trauma to a father who has lost his family. The mind can be fragile, and trauma can break even the strongest. Again, we have the idea of a feral child, undiscovered, now full-grown, living off raw fish. The fact that the merman could eat cooked fish as well suggests a dietary system built for it, pointing further to feral or mental illness. Or could it be Aquaman? He certainly had the beard. Though, who is to say there isn't a species of cryptid out there in the depths of the North Sea? Many other strange tales have come from there. I'll leave you with that thought next time you look out over the rolling waves of the East Coast. Could there be a wild man of the sea looking back at you? Thank you for watching.